Welcome to Afternoon Tea. Today we're going to do a, a video for Doulaverse with KC Women's Ministry. Doulaverse is where we talk about everything to do with being a doula, training to be a doula, um, and just random doula talk. What's it like being in the, in the life of a doula? So, you know, it's, it's quite fun and interesting. But yes. <laughs> today's video, we're going to talk about the TENS unit. So we're going to go over everything you need to know about recommending this amazingly helpful tiny little device to your doula clients. Um, and clients are welcome to watch the video and learn about the TENS unit as well so that they know going into it benefits, risks, and um, some things to be aware of. And then we're also going to go over what it is how and why it works and the best practices for using it. Yeah. So I'm Brittany Brownell. I have my bachelor's of science in health education. I'm a certified birth and bereavement uh, doula through still birthday, certified birth photographer. And I also teach belly binding and um, almost done with my certification for being a yoga teacher trainer. So woohoo! Hey, <laughs> um, yeah. And then I'm the um, a director and volunteer with Casey women's ministry. And I'm Madison. I am also a certified birth and bereavement doula through Still Birthday. I'm a trained postpartum doula and I teach baby wearing. And I also am a director with KC Women's Ministry. Yeah. All right. So what is a TENS unit? You might be asking. Well, TENS is actually an acronym. So TENS stands for Transcutaneous Electrical Nerve Stimulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so basically what that means is it's your cutaneous is skin. So it's going through your skin and stimulating the nerves. Um, it's long and fancy, but that's all it means. It just means it's going through the skin, um, the electrical currents. The different devices look different depending on what, um, you know, which one you buy. There's not just one out there. There are hundreds of thousands that are out there. They all look different and they all work a little different as well. Um, if you've ever been to a chiropractor where they put the little stickies on your back and it kind of does its little buzzing, that's exactly what a TENS unit is just on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see one, just look up Google and type in TENS unit, T-E-N-S unit, and then click on images. Oh, and Madison's showing one right now. Here's um, one version. Mm -hmm. There's one version. They, like she said, there are a ton of different versions. Ultimately, they're all small. None of them are very large. They all utilize a certain type of pad. And you have actually two pad types. One is this little square type of pad that Madison is showing. And the other one is kind of this hourglass shape pad. Um, some of them have the pads have different connectors. So if you're purchasing replacement pads, you do need to make sure you have the correct kind of connector for your pad. So Madison's showing one type. That's the type for the square pad. If you get this hourglass shape one, it's got this little circle and it's like a button that goes on the back of the pad. But yep, those just plug right into each other and they're ready to go. Super easy to use. Yes. And they're fairly inexpensive. Um, you know, they range anywhere from 20 to $40, I think. Mm -hmm. I got mine on Amazon for 30 or 35. And it also came with um, a div uh, an electrical, like a uh, current pen that you can use in various places too. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a good, it was a good buy. I was like, oh, I gotta get that. Yeah. <laughs> Seen several really good high quality ones on Amazon for for pretty cheap. Um, mm -hmm. I have seen them on Amazon as well, where they get like up to one hundred and fifty dollars. But you really don't need the super expensive ones. They're not going to do anything different. Mm -hmm. um, they might look nicer. They might have you know additional settings. Um, but I'll be honest, I got mine free when I took my training um, to be certified to use it in labor. You don't have to be certified as a doula in order to use it in labor. Um, it is FDA approved for pregnant women and people to use during labor. Um, so mine came super fancy with all these dials. I learned how to set the settings in the class and then I never touch these. I don't touch them. They're, it's, I don't know what they do. Um, I don't know the difference or why they're set the way that they are. So 
you don't necessarily need the fancy ones with all the dials because the ones that don't have the dials are already set properly and you're most likely not going to be changing the dials, especially if you're using it um, just for labor or um, any kind of pain relief. Mine doesn't have dials, but it does have options of like massage or uh, the, it has a couple other options. It doesn't really matter which one I choose. You can play with it and kind of feel what feels best to you and then recommend that to your clients. So I just tell my clients, I tend to go on the massage setting. It feels good. You know, it's just kind of this simple. And then as you put a person on the plus button, that's what gives you more intensity. So um, the longer in your labor you go, you want to add that intensity. But that's that's the only thing I really change is the plus or minus. Yeah. Once you have it set on what you want, that's what you're changing. So and mine, on, on that note, mine um, has options to either be the same intensity continuously um, and then you can increase that with the dials. Mm -hmm. It has an option to do intervals where it'll do it for a certain amount of time and then break and then a certain amount of time, but it's the same intensity. And then there's also a setting where um, it'll vary in intensity and frequency so that you get this really kind of random pattern. Um, you can con still continue to turn it up and that turns up with the highest intensity is for that pattern. Um, but one of the main reasons for turning it up, no matter what setting you're on, is to help prevent your body from getting used to the sensation and it no longer being effective. Um, so kind of like how if you're scratching your arm, eventually it won't feel like you're scratching anymore. It'll feel a little bit more dull. Um, the same goes with this. Eventually your body will get used to it and start to tune it out, especially while you're in labor and you're having so many other sensations, your body will start to tune it out. So you want to increase it so you can continue to feel it and continue getting the relief. Um, and that random setting um, helps prevent that so that you don't have to turn it up quite as often. Um, but what's great with any TENS unit, no matter which version you get, no matter what settings it has, is that the person in labor can be in complete control. Um, you can clip it on, they can clip it onto their belt or their bra or their gown, um, and they get to increase it as they need. They have complete control, which I know my clients really like knowing that, that it's something that they're in control of. Mm -hmm. That's something mine like too, you know, and you can give it to them and then you don't have to worry about it. You know, they, they then say if they want to continue using it or not, they, they totally control it. So you're not saying, oh, I think you need more or, oh, I think you're too high. It's totally on them and what they're feeling. Absolutely. Um, so with that description, um, the TENS unit is working through these electrodes by giving mild electrical pulses. And like Madison said, they're sent through the skin and they are going through the, the various nervous system. So, you know, the spinal cord and the brain in order to do what it does. Um, there's really very little scientific evidence, very little scientific research period done on the TENS unit, especially in relating to labor. Um, if you go to evidence-based birth, they do have a summary of some of the articles that have been done on them. And I've linked a couple articles at the bottom. So I've linked evidence-based birth and I'll have another article at the bottom that is a scientific study um, in the comments, but there's not a whole lot of science done on it. So let's talk about how it works. Yeah. So the electrical stimulations um, that we're talking about operate on what in um, medically they call the gate theory mm -hmm. of um, sensations. So essentially um, the inputs that your body is receiving is they're running on very similar nerve endings. Um, sorry, not the nerve endings, the, the nerves itself um, going into the brain to tell the brain what you're feeling. So when you're feeling pain, it's going to run on that nerve to the brain and tell the brain, hey, we're in pain. That's what makes you feel pain. Mm -hmm. What the gate theory is, is that these sensations that are coming from these electrical pads are running on the same nerves that the pain is running on. So if your brain is receiving 
these signals from the electrical stimulation, it's not able to listen to the pain signals as much. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to feel less pain because your brain is receiving fewer pain signals. Think um, of it like a funnel. Mm -hmm. So you've got this funnel here and you've got all these signals going into the funnel. Only a few can come out the bottom, right? There's just not that much space. So that's, that's that gate theory of here's my gate. My gate is tiny. I'm sending a lot of signals. Only a couple are getting through. So the pain should be minimal because you're flooding those signals with the TENS unit. Yeah, absolutely. Another theory that it works on um, is that it's thought to use this diffuse noxious inhibitory control. Um, so when you turn the intensity of your TENS unit all the way up, you're basically giving your body another source of pain in a way, because it's pretty intense. <laughs> you know, you don't want to go all the way up unless you have something <laughs> in there because whew, um, it's yeah. like you're getting a shock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but essentially this is causing your body to release endorphins and those endorphins are acting as your own personal morphine supply. <laughs> yeah. so, um, you know, the more pain that you feel, your body wants to combat that somehow. And oxytocin is the body's natural form in labor and endorphins is its natural form in other scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so your body is going to flood with endorphins by turning that unit all the way up. Yes. And it doesn't have to be turned all the way to the highest setting. It just needs to be turned to um, the point where you can feel it, which is why we were talking about um, turning it up as you get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, if it's on, but you can't feel it, it's not going to be releasing those endorphins. You have to be able to feel it. Um, and that pain that we're talking about also isn't pain in the traditional sense. It's pain that the body is thinking that it's pain. It's not painful. Your TENS unit should not be painful. It should be calming and relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, it usually is pretty calming and relaxing. It's so if you go to, sometimes a chiropractor will use it just to help relax those muscles before they start their work. Um, I've seen massage therapists use it. I've seen physical therapists use it both to stimulate and relax. So it yeah. shouldn't really be painful so much, not unless you really turn it up to a point where you're like, okay, now I'm feeling a sting. Yes, absolutely. Um, and if you are turning it up to a point where you're feeling pain, you can also turn it back down. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to leave it at a high intensity. Um, or if you need it high for a moment, you know, just for a burst of, you know, whatever, and then turn it back down. You can certainly do that too. That's the mm -hmm. wonderful thing about this is that you have complete control mm -hmm. um, and you can, you can use it as, as you need. Yes. So there are some times when you shouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So you're pregnant. You have some cramping going on. Don't put it on your stomach. Don't put it on your pelvis. Don't put it anywhere near your uterus. Mm -hmm. If you are pregnant, it should only go on extremities and on your lower back. You can put it on your shoulders. You can put it on your arms. If you have an arm cramp or if you're having leg cramps at night, you know, those Charlie horses that are so awful. Um, you can put it on where you have those Charlie horses, but don't put it on your stomach at any point. Ever. And if you're putting it on your back, um, there is a possibility that it can send you into labor. So it is recommended that you don't use the TENS unit on your back, um, whether your low back or your upper back, nowhere on your back until at least 38 weeks. Um, it's not guaranteed to put you into labor. However, it does have that possibility. So um, moving forward with caution is always a good idea when, come, when using the TENS unit. Very good idea, especially since we're using it without a doctor recommendation. Yes, absolutely. We are self-medicating at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another time when to not use it. If you have heart problems or you have a pacemaker, this can interfere with that pacemaker. This can interfere with your natural electrical signals in your body. Um, so that's a time when you shouldn't use it. Anytime you have something electrical in your body, especially related to the heart. Um, Never place the electrodes on the front of your neck or near your eyes. 
don't put it on your face. Just don't do it. You know, it's not a good spot for it. It's, it's not going to have any benefits if you put it on your face anyway. So there's really no needs to, no need to put it on there. Yeah. But that's why my kit came with that pen. So it's got this roller pen and I can put that on my face or I can put that on my feet and have a really low um, signal. And that actually helps tighten those muscles and works those muscles. Um, and it's supposed to help with migraines by using it on oh. your face that way. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah but you need something that was made specifically for that region. Um, those pads are way too big to put anywhere on your face. Yeah, Smart. don't put that there. <laughs> don't don't do the it. Plastic on it, they're not plugged in. <laughs> no, don't do it, don't do it. You can cause yourself some serious eye damage for starters. Um, you can cause your throat to seize and lose your breath. Just not a good idea, just don't do it. Don't use them in the water, you'll need to take them off. Um, and when you get out, thoroughly dry off, make sure your skin is completely dry before putting it back on. Um, because it's water and electricity. You can burn your skin if your skin is still wet or think of the hair dryer going in the water. This won't have quite the same effect because it's not gonna have, it's running on batteries, but it will still shock you in the point of, you can harm your baby. So yeah, don't do it. Don't use it in your water. Um, and don't use it with heat. It should be used on its own. You know, this electrical current is already producing some heat. If you want a heating pad on your lower back because you think that might be more beneficial, take these off, try the heating pad. If it helps, great. If it doesn't help, you can put the TENS unit back on. Um, you could put the heating pads on your shoulders if you wanted to, but don't put the heating pad anywhere near the electrodes. Um, some side effects that can happen that we don't one, usually hear about. Oh, yes. One more. Um, if you have a history of seizures, you should mm. not use the TENS unit either, um, or at least not until you have doctor approval. It's not, depending on what kind of seizures you have, it may not cause you to have seizures. But if you plan on using a TENS unit and you have a history of any kind of seizures, get doctor approval first. Good one. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> so some potential side effects that we need to go over. Um, some people have an allergic reaction to the pads, um, to the sticky adhesion on those pads. Um, they're quite sticky and you know they're standard, but they do make some hypoallergenic ones that you can use or you just can't use it. It's gonna give you a rash or hives or something along those lines. It's not gonna be comfortable. It's not gonna be worth it. Um, it's going to be the wrong kind of stimulation and pain that your body is feeling at that point. Yeah. Some people feel a buzzing, tingling, or a prickling sensation, and some people find that pretty uncomfortable. And if you don't like it, that's totally fine. You don't have to use the TENS unit. We have other options. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. So that brings us to one more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sometimes if you have the TENS unit too high, it can also, uh, you have the risk of getting burned by the electrical uh, stimulation if you have it too high, um, which again, like we said earlier, if it's too high where you're feeling any kind of pain, turn it down, um, mainly because we don't want you to be in pain. It's not going to be beneficial if it hurts, but also because you risk getting burned if you turn it too high. Good point. Yes. You know, it is electricity. Mm -hmm. And electricity can burn you. <laughs> yes, definitely can. <laughs> yes, it can. I don't know why I didn't have that one down. Um, so that brings us to the TENS unit during labor. How do you use it when you're in labor? So you've got the four sticky pads. Well, where do I put these things? You put them on your lower back. One, two, three, four, right around your spine. Yes, I'm going to see if I can pull up my, I have a picture of it of the uh, proper placement. I'm gonna try and pull it up real quick. They should be, the, the top two pads should be about two fingers below the uh, bottom of your bra line. Um, and then they should be about two fingers, which is approximately an inch on either side of the spine. So starting from the spine, your spine's here, the, the edge of the pad should be on this side going this way. Um, and then there should be, again, an inch between the bottom of the top pad and the top of the bottom pad. Um, 
if they are if the pads are too close together um they can interfere with each other and they can um they won't work properly if they're too close together there we go so you can see the especially with the the larger pads mm -hmm. um if they're the smaller pads then you know you're going to have the bottoms um it's not going to be quite as high but it's going to start just below the bra line and then this one's going to start right at the top of your pelvis and again you can see one inch between the top and bottom of those pads and then one inch between the pad and the spine on either side she might actually have a little more than one inch it might be a little more than one inch yeah, it's hard to tell this was during our training, so it may have been a little off, but you want at yeah, least no, it's good. It but, looks really good. Good placement, good placement. Now, pregnant, you may not be able to get those on your back by yourself. So you will have support people, even if you don't have a doula. Um, you know, this is for those people who are pregnant, of course. You know, if you don't have a doula, see if your nurse can put it on or your spouse or whomever's in the room. Doulas, you should put these on, especially if you are providing the TENS unit. So Madison and I both carry TENS units for our clients to use. Um, we talk about them during our prenatals. I even give my clients an opportunity to try them during the prenatal so they can feel it. Um, you should be placing these pads. And then you give the TENS unit to them so they can operate the unit. Yes. And please make sure that you're familiar with your specific unit and how to plug everything in and which pad goes where with the wiring. Um, so for mine specifically, it has, you know, we talk about the four pads. It has two separate cords that go into separate spots on my actual unit. And then each of these cords has a red and a black wire. If these are not placed properly, um, as far as red going with red and black going with black, um, then it can cause um, not nerve damage, but it, it can cause um, side effects to the nerves if they're not placed properly because the electrical currents will be crossed. And if you're putting them on your back where your spinal cord is, we don't want to risk that. Um, so make sure that you're familiar with your specific unit, how to plug it into your unit and how to plug it into the pads and how to place the pads properly so that nothing gets crossed, nothing is of concern and everyone stays safe. And that's why it's especially important for you to be the one to put the pad on. Um, because if you're, if you have a unit like me where it's, you know, the color specifications is important. Make sure you mm -hmm. know that. Yours seems pretty complicated. <laughs> It is, it is pretty complicated, which, yeah. which is why I mentioned earlier, I'm like, you don't need one that's complicated. I just, when I took my certification, this is what I got for free with the class. And so it's super complicated for good reason. I don't, if I was buying my own, I would not buy one that's this complicated, but it is what it is. Um, thankfully, I was a former chiropractic assistant. So I worked with the big TENS units. Um, so I have a lot of familiarity um, and it's kind of habit that I already know what colors go where. Um, but yes, make sure you're familiar with yours. You don't need to buy one that's as complicated as mine because it's not going to give you any more benefit than the less complicated ones. Yeah, mine's not very complicated, but still it's important to know not to cross the wires in any way. Um, it's important to read your manual. Make sure you understand what it's using. You are using this for a client and if you mess up, there can be some pretty big consequences. So yeah. do know your, your unit. I highly recommend using your unit on yourself at some point, you know, yeah. use it on your hips, use it on um, your shoulders, on your upper shoulders or something. Use it somewhere that you're finding, oh, I carry a lot of tension in my shoulders mm -hmm. or, ah, I got a Charlie horse. Use it, learn it. I uh, use mine for uh, menstrual cramps. Yeah. And, and Kind of, I have I have uh, uterine cramps and bladder cramps pretty much daily. So um, for a long time, this was always on, always in my pocket. Um, a lot of times, part of my morning routine was putting on the pads, and then I would just plug it in as needed. Um, and a lot of times, it'll provide enough relief that you don't have to have it going all day. But these are also safe that if you want to use them all day, you can. Mm -hmm. um, when I took my certification, the train the the teacher 
said that a lot of times she'll put them on her mid back when she goes on um, road trips because her back gets really sore sitting for a long time and she'll just keep it on for 12, 14 hours while she's driving and it, and it helps significantly. So um, they are safe to do that as long as you're at a level where you're comfortable. Um, but yeah, definitely try it on yourself. Yeah. Because aside from wanting to know what you're putting on your clients, these are amazing. They feel so good. And there's so many benefits. Like, they're, they're so cool. They are really cool. I've used them for hip pain. I carry a lot of tension in my hips and my shoulders. Um, you know, when, especially after a birth <laughs> and I've been leaning over and I've been doing hip squeezes and I've been doing counter pressure and yeah. you know, you carry a lot of tension there. Mm -hmm. When I'm carrying my camera all day long, I carry a lot of tension in my shoulders because I'm carrying my camera all day long. It doesn't seem like five pounds will weighs a lot, but when you're carrying it for hours on end. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, hand unit is fantastic. Um, so some other things to note about the TENS unit during labor. Like she said, you can use it during the entire labor. You can use it just one portion of the labor too. We can take it off, we can put it back on. Something to note about taking it off and putting it back on, um, you wanna have already started it during early labor if you can. Yes. You know, It's not gonna be as beneficial if you jump in and put it on, uh, but you haven't used it before and you're in active labor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The earlier it gets put on, the more effective it is because um, the fewer pain signals your brain has already been receiving from the contractions. Um, if you're already a, at a point where um, you're, you're feeling like you're not able to control your contractions, the TENS unit's not going to touch them. Um, if you're at the point where you're thinking about pain medication, the TENS unit's not going to even touch your contractions. Um, and like Brittany said, if you're not quite to that point, but you're a lot further in your labor, your contractions are pretty intense, they're close together. If you haven't already had that sensation yet, it's most likely not gonna help even if you turn it up all the way, just because your brain is already receiving so many pain signals that um, it'll be easier to work through them and breathe through them and um, whatever kind of comfort measures you need rather than the TENS unit, it's just, it's not gonna touch them. So the earlier yeah. you can get that started, um, the more beneficial it's going to be. Well, and the other note about that is it can potentially overwhelm you mm -hmm. and send you into a spiral. So yeah. feel free to use it if, that is what you feel you need, or if as a doula, you feel that is what your client needs, um, op offer it and say, hey, we have this as an option. However, I do want you to know we haven't been using it. Um, so it really may not be beneficial or it may increase your intensity while we have it on. And then we'll need to take it off and figure out another way to recenter. Yeah. Um, so start during early labor. And if you don't like it, that's totally fine. Take it off. If you do like it, we can still use all of our other tools. We can still massage. We can still do counter pressure. We can still do um, hip squeezes. We can still do everything on the ball that, that your client wants. You can do everything you need to do with that TENS unit on. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna hurt anything just to have the pads on and to have it at a really low frequency if they like it. Yes, yes. So that is all I have for today. Do you have anything you want to add, Madison? I think she froze. <laughs> oh, no, you're frozen too. Oh, uh, no, I hear you. <laughs> I, I know. Oh, there you, there there you are. Okay. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I think we covered everything. Um, obviously, if you're planning on using um, as a doula, using a TENS unit, make sure that you um, are comfortable with everything that we've talked about. Do your own research as well. Um, make sure that you're 100% comfortable with the benefits and the uh, potential side effects so that you can effectively communicate those with your client so that they are fully informed when they are deciding whether to use the TENS unit or not. Um, and definitely let us know if you have any questions. We both are familiar with, um, obviously with TENS units, we use them on ourselves and our clients. So we're happy to answer any questions if you have any, whether you're a doula or a pregnant person. Yes.
So post those questions in the comments or message us individually on Facebook. We're happy to answer those questions. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and ask for notifications because we send out new videos every Thursday. Um, and we actually have, we've got a couple of pregnant doulas um, that like to do videos too. So yours included is now <laughs> one of them. Um, and every week I will be sending out a week by week update on pregnancy, not just my pregnancy, but pregnancy in general, um, you know, what to expect, that kind of thing so that you can have your pregnancy along with mine and we'll be like friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your pregnant friend. I love it. So Yay. make sure you subscribe and hit that subscribe um, notification button. So you hear about when all of our notifications come out. Um, I'm working on getting all of our videos up on podcasts. Uh, we have a podcast called Bumpaholics and it's not filled yet, but I'm working on getting stuff mm -hmm. up there. So feel free to find us on um, podcast locations as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really love having you here and um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have some topics you want us to cover, let us know. We would love to talk about whatever questions that you have and topics that you want to cover. So, right. goodbye for now. <laughs>